I have to do the same thing, unfortunately. Oh, so. okay. Okay, so then we have Dr. Peter talking at us about scleritis and I think survival in scleritis for both the surgeon and the patient is important. So I asked Dr. Peter McCarthy to speak on scleritis, survival guide in well under 15 minutes. Okay, that's an interesting challenge. Please all yours, Dr. Great. Thanks very much, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, as you all know, scleritis has classification was developed by Mr. Peter Watson. It's been around for 50 years and it, it works incredibly well, non-necrotizing and necrotizing, diffuse nodular and necrotizing. It, the characteristic symptoms of scleritis are pain, which get, is dull and boring, often the worst pain that the patient's ever had, wakes the patient from sleep early in the morning, typically poorly responsive to analgesics, and often these patients have been investigated for many different causes. There are a range of signs, the most important of which is a red, tender, painful globe. And there are these characteristic signs of scleral edema, vascular dilatation and closure. And you can often see nodules and frank areas of necrosis. The most important signs are these changes in the relationship between the episcleral venous vascular plexuses and which tell us that there's scleral edema and we must look for vascular closure in the microcirculation. Natural daylight is very useful for examining these patients, as is the red free beam on the sleep lamp. And there's a range of severities of anterior scleritis from diffuse, which is the commonest form, to necrotizing, which is the most severe and the greatest threat to vision, but is fortunately the least common cause. A keratitis is a very common association with scleritis, and it can range from very localized forms of scleritis to severe widespread necrotizing forms of scleritis and melts, which are a severe threat to vision. These very commonly occur in rheumatoid arthritis and anchor vasculitis. Posterior scleritis has been underappreciated in the past. We can use that same classification of diffuse and nodular. We can't diagnose necrotizing posterior scleritis except during a, an operation when we can see it or pathologically. There's a range of physical signs that I'll briefly uh, go through. And just like anterior scleritis, recurrences are common and, and a, a significant number are associated with systemic disease. One of the commonest things that we see is posterior scleritis involving the posterior pole, where it can be a, sub, a, a subretinal mass, a swollen disc with retinal folds and uh, macular star, choroidal folds, or a serous retinal detachment. Less commonly, the peripheral sclera can be involved so that you get a choroidal effusion, often serous retinal detachments as well. And from ciliary body rotation, you can get secondary angle closure, a shallow AC, and a very high intraocular pressure. It's also important to realize that we not uncommonly see posterior scleritis with anterior scleritis, as is illustrated here. And occasionally we just have pain in a tender globe and decreased vision with really no other signs. Scleromalacia perforans is an important but now extremely uncommon form of, uh, of scleritis that's basically only seen in patients with advanced rheumatoid arthritis. It's asymptomatic and the patients present with blurred vision and it's due to vasculitis involving the, the end arteries uh, in the sclera. Stins or surgically induced necrotizing scleritis used to be common when we did large incision cataract surgery, like this extracapsular incision. But these days it's mostly infective and particularly following operations such as pterygium surgery. And infective scleritis is something we always need to think about. It's depending where you are in the world, anywhere from 10 to 30% of the patients with scleritis that you see typically in necrotizing scleritis, can be a wide range of, of exogenous organisms. Occasionally, we can see it with TB, and in India, it's more common than in other parts of the world, sometimes with severe intraocular infection, and occasionally from contiguous spread, particularly by herpes viruses, 
and a cancer amoeba. There are a range of important systemic diseases associated with scleritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and anchor associated vasculitis are still the most common. It's important to remember a B27 related seronegative arthritis, a range of other systemic vasculitides, things, rare diseases like relapsing polychondritis, and uncommon diseases like IgA nephropathy. The diagnosis of scleritis is all about the clinical assessment. Mr. Watson always used to say if you didn't suspect the diagnosis by the time you'd finished taking the history, you probably wouldn't make the diagnosis. And it's really the history, the examination, and a careful review of systems that's focused on detecting symptoms of the common associations. There are a wide range of investigations that we can do, the important ones being a chest X-ray, uh, anchor serology, rheumatoid serology, uh, and syphilis serology and TB serology. And there are a range of other imaging studies that we can do. There's really no specific good treatment guidelines for scleritis. There's certainly no randomized controlled clinical trials. And it's basically a step systemic approach to treatment where we use uh, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and oral corticosteroids for the mild and non-necrotizing forms. And for necrotizing disease, we need aggressive combination immunosuppressive therapy with high dose oral steroids, second line agents like cyclophosphamide and methotrexate, and where they're available, biologics are really proving to be very useful, particularly TNF blockers and B cell depleting agents like rituximab. So the, the key messages for you to take home about scleritis is although it's rare, it's an important disease. Mr. Watson's classification is the easiest and simplest way to get the types of scleritis in your head. Um, very commonly associated with systemic disease, the more severe the scleritis, the more likely there is to be a systemic disease. Necrotizing scleritis is a marker of life-threatening systemic vasculitis. Always think about infection and TB. And we have a sort of stepped algorithm of treatment from NZs through steroids to combination immunosuppressive therapy and biologics. So thanks very much. That's a very quick tour through scleritis, but it's got the major messages there. It's been a pleasure to be part of this symposium. I hope everyone enjoys it. Thank you, Dr. Peter. And uh, may I 